Robotic welding has always been something that's part of production welding, but it has now started to become common in small niche specialty welding jobs. Or in other words, type of welding that I've done my entire career. Somebody actually just sent me a video of a robot doing an aluminum TIG weld. It kind of got me thinking, even with all the experience that I've had in my career of TIG welding, am I good enough to keep up with one of these things? Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the footage of the robot welder that somebody sent me here. We can see it is going to weld this outside corner joint right here. So let's actually watch the footage and then we'll break down what we see together here and that way we'll have a bit of an idea what to look for when I start welding. Okay, hold up. I've spotted something that I want to take a look at even at this point here. This is a joint that I demonstrate many times to my students as well as stuff that I've done in production a ton. This is one of my favorite welds of all time and it has been for years. Let's go back and take a look at the joint assembly here. Okay, first up, take a look at the tack in the middle here. This may look good at first glance, but let's take a closer look right here. Okay, see here, this is 1 8 or 3.2 millimeter material by the looks of it. This joint fills up extremely fast, especially with this type of material that we're using here. And take a look at what we see here. This tack is slightly overfilled already. The size and profile of it is not only proud, but it becomes quite wide overall compared to the thickness of the material. Now, the reason that this is interesting to me, I don't know if the robot tacked this together or a human did, it's simply because this tack right in the middle of this one is kind of inconvenient. It's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with on the fly. The robot is going to have to make compensations on the fly for the filler material that's already there with this tack. It's the only way that it's going to be able to prevent a high spot or a proud spot with the consistency as it welds over it later. Now, in order to deal with a high spot as far as a tack that might be in your way, the robot will be better to start the weld a little bit bigger. What's going to happen is this is going to match the width of the tack that it's already set for us. And then it's going to have to back off the filler when it travels over it. But take a look at this here. Taking a closer look here, we can see that the fit up is actually kind of not done the best. We have a little bit of gap right here at the start to deal with. And it actually looks like towards the end, we might have a little bit of overlap as well. Now, anybody who does any kind of production welding knows how important it is to properly fit the pieces together before you start welding. Having a little bit of a gap to deal with or any overlap with plates definitely changes a ton of variables that are going to have to be adjusted on the fly. Take another look at it here. It actually looks pretty clean overall. So the wire brushing and cleanliness looks okay. And another thing that's kind of cool here is if we take a look at the tacks on the end of it, we can actually see that there is a good amount of filler material here. Now, especially when approaching the end of a joint like this, a little bit of extra filler is going to help to prevent overheating. Now, I don't know what this robot obviously is using for settings, and I don't know if or how it's gonna be able to make any adjustments or compensations on the fly, because the few things that we've spotted on the fly here just to start are gonna give it a few obstacles that it has to deal with during welding. Okay, at this point here, I'm pumped. We've got a few things that we can go off of here, so let's start putting this together. The first thing that I'm gonna do is properly clean the plate material. First off, I'm gonna wipe everything down with acetone here, and then I'm gonna get down with some wire brushing. Now, this is a little trick that I like doing. Check this out here. Okay, what I'm gonna do is use one piece of plate as a ruler. You can see I place it parallel with the edge of the welding joint, and then I do my wire brushing as normal. I'm keeping the brushed area nice and tight to the joint. We're not scratching around all crazy. Then I flip the plates around, and you can see when I'm done, I have really clean edges to my wire brushing. At this point, again, I'm gonna wipe everything down with acetone. This is the ideal preparation I like doing for serious projects. Now that I'm ready and the joint is clean and I'm confident it's ready to weld, I'm going to start tacking it together. The main thing I'm going to focus on when putting this one together is perfect alignment. Now after welding, I want to see a consistent amount of penetration on the back side, so having any overlap with the alignment is definitely something that we want to avoid. Okay, getting ready, carefully tacking the ends here, making sure everything stays nice and straight. I'm then going to add some filler material to the ends. This is going to help to prevent any overheating at the start or finish of the joint. And now when I do the one in the center, this is where I want to be extremely careful. Now, like I talked about with an outside corner joint configuration, overfilling can happen in the blink of an eye with this one. Because I want to keep things nice and consistent as I travel over it with my welding, I'm going to add this tack here and I'm going to hit it with a lot of heat, however, not a ton of filler material. I don't want to make it overly big or the shape of it excessively convex. When assembling this joint, tacking it together, this is a really important factor to pay attention to. Now it's all put together, let's take a look. Okay, we can see right away this looks exactly the way we want for doing any serious project. The joint fit up is pretty much perfect and it is consistent from start to finish. All of the tacking I've done looks organized and I can definitely do a decent job of dealing with this one in the center as I travel over it. 
We can also rest assured that everything as far as plate preparation has been done properly. There's no chances for contamination. We can see that the wire brushing adds a little bit of cleanliness to it as well. Maybe we have a few important things that can give us a slight advantage as we go into the weld out. Okay, let's go over the footage of the welding pass right here. Like I said, I have no idea what the settings are or how this robot's gonna make adjustments on the fly. It seems like it might be using just a pulse setting of some kind. You can see the automatic feed happening just ahead of the torch here. Okay, getting going here. Yes, we definitely see some things that I thought we might be seeing. The consistency overall so far seems pretty good. Okay, getting ready to go over the tack. Let's see how it does. Oh man, yeah, okay, exactly as I was thinking. Carrying on though, it seems like everything is maintaining consistency pretty well. Now the plate must be getting really hot by this point. This might be the area where I start to back off my heat a little bit or I start to make adjustments to prevent anything from changing or getting too hot near the end. Okay, and finishing up here, the robot is done. Let's take a look. Okay, looking at everything here from this shot actually looks really awesome. I personally love outside corner work that has a little bit of a tighter stepping pattern. We can see looking at the cleaning action of this one that it looks really good from start to finish. But let's break down some of the finer details of this stuff that I talked about already. Take a look at this shot right here. We can see as the light is casting shadows down the length of it, we can actually see a few things as far as inconsistency with the profile. I would say at the beginning, the amount of heat that it was using looked pretty good. But remember, the important thing is there's a gap here. Because there's a gap, of course, it's sinking in a little bit nicer. But then taking a look at this area here, all of a sudden we have some filler start to pile up a little bit. And looking at the joint configuration of this one, this is where the joint is actually starting to close up a little bit. That's why you're seeing that filler material start to pile up there. All of a sudden, the amount of heat required to keep this filler material blending in nicely would have changed drastically here. Now the section after this area starts to look pretty good actually, but rolling forward a little more, take a look at the area as we go over the tack. We can see looking at this here, this area sticks out like a sore thumb. Again, looking at it after the fact, under normal lighting, it does look pretty good, but these little inconsistencies with profile are really important to me as far as the work that I do. When I'm working on something like this myself, I wanna keep the consistency of what I'm doing as perfect as I can from start to finish. And we can see here that under scrutiny, this area definitely stands out. Now remember something else that's really important about this section right here is we want to maintain proper penetration on the other side. Unfortunately, we can't get a good look at the penetration on the other side of this one, but from my educated guess, I would probably say that we have a little bit of lack of penetration where we have to travel over this tack in the center. Even for an experienced professional like myself, having something all of a sudden you have to deal with, it just sucks. <laughs> Again, honestly, I know a lot of people wouldn't split hairs this much with these details, but when I'm working on a project like this, this is the type of pride that I like to take with the small details of my work. These are all things that could be so easily taken care of by paying attention to this stuff a little more closely during joint assembly. Okay, taking a look at the end here, this is another little thing that I see here. See how the cleaning action starts to get a little bit more narrow here. This is because the welding area is actually flaring out and becoming a little bit wider. This would be an area that personally, I would back off the heat a little bit or overcompensate by adding a little bit of extra filler. Whatever it is, I'm going to be making adjustments as I approach the end of a joint to make sure that this doesn't happen. This is something honestly that a human, I guess, would be able to have the foresight to think ahead of and deal with. Now in my program, dealing with students online, teaching them how to do stuff like this, we talk about what to get prepared for even before you start welding each pass. Being aware ahead of time of when you should probably be ready to start dialing back the heat or make adjustments on the fly. It's gonna help you to keep control of something at the end of a joint like this here, keep things more consistent as the heat is increasing. All right, well done my robot friend. This one actually does look pretty sweet, but we can see from a few details here that we might have a few small advantages. Let's now turn on my welding robot mode and see how I do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is get extremely comfortable. I'm gonna make sure that the workpiece is clamped properly. I'm gonna use some tooling from my strong hand tools table. And as I get set here, I'm testing the amount of range that I have and how I remain comfortable as I travel through it. Typically what I would do with a joint like this is break it into two separate passes, but because the Robot Welder 5000 did it in one shot completely, I gotta make sure that I can hang. So comfort is going to be huge, as well as making sure I can see clearly. You can see I'm getting positioned so I can see clearly all the way to the end of the joint. I wanna make sure that as I start to travel along, my hands don't get in my way. I don't run out of filler material, something stupid like that. So taking the time to get set up completely and comfortably is extremely important. Okay, deep breaths here, getting started. I am digging in with the heat pretty quickly here. I've given it a little bit of filler right away to make sure nothing falls through or overheats. However, not too much filler. Remember, this joint can overfill in the blink of an eye. Now, traveling along here, my rhythm is pretty good. 
I'm trying to make sure that I keep my stepping distance relatively close to what the robot was doing. But now as I start to approach my tack, I'm getting pretty nervous about having to deal with this after I talk so much trash on the robot. Approaching it, I'm really focusing hard here. You can see I'm backing off the filler material as I travel over top of it. I don't want this area to stand up proud at all. Okay, now continuing on. I'm pretty sure I did a decent job, but I can't actually really know how I did until I finish. At this point here, I'm just trying to keep up my consistency. I'm trying to get good heat into the joint so that things sit down and blend in for good fusion, good penetration. Okay, and now as I approach the end of the joint, this is also where I really have to focus as well. I'm decreasing the heat a little bit here. I'm also making sure that I keep up with the amount of filler material I'm using as well. I don't want anything getting wider at all, or especially falling any kind of concave or hollow shape to it at all. At this point here, I'm hanging on for dear life at the end. Again, super nervous on this one. Hanging on, trying to finish as perfect as I can. Backing off the heat, finishing. Bada boom, there we go. Let's see how I did. Okay, looking at this one overall, I am pretty happy with it. We can see the consistency stayed pretty good from start to finish. Looking at the overall width, we can see that this stayed pretty consistent from start to finish. And especially as things were heating up as we approached the end, we don't see the width increasing or anything getting wider. You can see that I kept up with the filler material as I backed off the heat. This prevented the end from falling flat or concave. Looking at the stepping distance overall, you can see I kept things pretty tight, similar to what the robot did. Looking at everything from this angle here, you can see the profile is consistent to what we wanted. We don't see any high spots or inconsistencies. And especially as we traveled over the tack in the center, we can see that this area stayed nice and consistent as well. We don't have any high spots, any areas that fall lower than others. This was the main thing that we tried to focus on and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Flipping this over and looking at the other side, we can see that there was penetration from start to finish. Everything looks pretty consistent. And you can see that even as we travel over the tack in the center, we don't have any inconsistency with the penetration either. There was a lot of things we tried to do really well with this one and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Okay, of course, this video is not meant to throw any kind of shade at anybody working in the robotic industry and welding. Growth in the industry is always a good thing. Or am I saying this because I don't want the robots to see that I made this video, so hopefully they don't show up here and delete me. But when it comes to trying to outdo a robot, if there is any competition in the future that might take me out, there is that saying that I like, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs>